hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Welcome to our video entitled MRI Fusion Transperineal Prostate Biopsy Instructions and Troubleshooting. In this video, we will show the instruments and layout for this procedure, as well as how to properly administer local anesthesia. The biopsy will be performed and common problems will be addressed in the troubleshooting section. We begin with the instruments and equipment layout required for this procedure. The transrectal ultrasound probe is lying next to its probe cover and an attached lure lock syringe with water. A Tumi syringe is also filled with ultrasound gel. The stepper holds the transrectal ultrasound probe and grid plate. It has fins that move up and down to change the angle of the grid plate. The stepper can also telescope forward to push the grid plate flush against the perineum. The back table setup includes sterile gloves, blue towels, biopsy gun, grid plate, 1% lidocaine with an 18 gauge needle and Chiba needle, cup of betadine, bowl of sterile water, and tegaderm dressing. The GU bed is used with Allen stirrups. The crossbar is attached in place of the bottom attachment. The crossbar contains the stepper arm, which should be secured in line with the patient's left hip. The field generator of the Euronav system is attached to a Bookwalter post clamp. The field generator is placed cephalad to the Allen stirrups. The Euronav system is placed near the right Allen stirrup and the ultrasound machine is placed in closer proximity to the surgeon to aid in real-time prostate visualization. The ultrasound probe is inserted into the probe cover upside down and with the probe tip angled towards the ground so that air collects on the opposite side of the transducer. The probe cover is then inflated with water from the lure lock syringe. Air is then aspirated with the probe tip angled towards the ground in order to degas the probe cover. Physically tapping the air bubbles can also facilitate their release. The probe is then loaded into the stepper. The metal pin and water tubing on the lateral aspects should slide into their respective grooves. The probe is then screwed into place. The loaded stepper is then loaded onto the stepper holder at the bed. The trackers are loaded onto the sides of the stepper holder. Ultrasound gel from the Tumi syringe is applied to the ultrasound probe tip and inside the rectum. The ultrasound probe is then inserted into the rectum and the stepper arm is tightened once in place. The scrotum is taped towards the abdomen to expose the perineal skin. Lastly, the legs are raised to move the patient's pelvis prior to fusion. The legs are draped with the cystoscopy pack and the suprapubic area is covered with a sterile blue towel. The ultrasound probe is also covered with a sterile blue towel. Local anesthesia is injected in three locations. First, the perineal subcutaneous tissue is injected with 10 cc's of 1% lidocaine. This aspect of local anesthesia should be performed quickly since it only provides anesthesia at the needle insertion sites at the skin level. The prostate nerve block is then performed by injecting 5 cc's of 1% lidocaine between the prostate capsule and levator muscles. Air should be removed from the syringe prior to injection to prevent the introduction of air artifact around the prostate. Lidocaine should be visualized expanding the distance between these two structures if given in the correct space. This is also performed on the contralateral side. The prostate nerve block is finalized by injecting 5 cc's of 1% lidocaine between the seminal vesicles and lateral aspect of the prostate. The needle should be visualized as it passes between the rectal wall and posterior prostate. Lidocaine should be visualized expanding the distance between the seminal vesicles and prostate if given in the correct space. This is also performed on the contralateral side. The grid plate is then attached to the stepper after the administration of local anesthesia. The grid plate pins are secured on each side. Prostate ultrasound and MRI segmentation is then performed, which is featured later in this video. We can now begin obtaining prostate biopsy specimens. The desired biopsy location is selected on the Euronav system and visualized in real time on the ultrasound machine. The biopsy gun is inserted through the selected grid plate hole and fired once the location is satisfactory. The biopsy specimen is placed into the specimen container and the biopsy gun is dipped in betadine and rinsed with sterile water. Once all biopsies are obtained, the grid plate is removed. The biopsy probe is removed from the patient by loosening the stepper holder. The tracker clips are removed and hung on the side. The biopsy probe and stepper are removed from the holder and immediately cleaned. Cleaning and sterilization of the ultrasound probe is often the rate limiting step to performing biopsies 
since surgical centers often do not own more than a few probes. The multitude of steps, equipment, and interfaces results in common problems that will be addressed in this troubleshooting section. Success begins from the setup. The median raffe should be in line with the biopsy probe. The biopsy probe should be pointed downwards to follow the trajectory of the rectum. The perineum should also be parallel and flush with the edge of the bed and crossbar. Air at any interface produces artifact that prevents adequate visualization. To remove air between the probe cover and the rectal wall, the probe can be wiggled quickly in a lateral direction. The probe should then be relaxed off of the prostate to allow the prostate to expand into its native position and form. Proper prostate segmentation is crucial to ensuring that the live ultrasound image correlates well with the uploaded MRI images. This begins with a smooth and uniform speed sweep of the prostate. The borders of the prostate are selected and the edges are properly chosen in the axial and sagittal views. Segmentation should be performed as the prostate is scrolled through in each view. Blending should be performed between the ultrasound and MRI images to ensure that the bladder aligns well with the prostate in both images. The prostate can be dragged and rotated to better align the images. The green prostate outline from the ultrasound image should correlate well with the pink prostate outline from the MRI image before proceeding. Now that prostate visualization is optimized, we can discuss various techniques to obtain your desired target. The stepper holder fins can be moved on either side to alter the holes of the grid plate. We recommend visualizing the desired lesion on the ultrasound machine and then moving the fins to align the grid plate hole with the current view. The next technique is utilizing the biopsy gun bevel to change the direction of the biopsy. The biopsy follows the direction of the bevel. At the skin, the bevel should be down and then rotated upwards for posterior lesions to avoid the rectal wall and rotated medially for lateral lesions. The top of the grid plate can be pushed towards the patient to assist in bevel down and pulled away from the patient to assist in bevel up. Lastly, the patient's legs can be further raised to move the pubic bone away from the prostate. This is especially helpful for anterior lesions. This concludes our video presentation. Thank you for your time and feel free to contact us with any questions.